algae can soon become a plague in any aquarium. In this video, we're going to take a look at what causes it and what we can put in place to prevent it or at least keep it to a minimum. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm Russ. I've been in and out of the aquarium hobby for well over 30 years now and I hope I can pass the knowledge that I've picked up all over that time over to you. So today we're going to take a look at algae. Algae will form in every aquarium. There will be some level of algae growth in everybody's aquarium. But what we have to do is try and prevent that algae growth getting out of control and destroying the entire ecosystem that you've produced in your aquarium. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we'll take a look at what causes algae. Algae will be caused by an imbalance of nutrients, carbon dioxide, oxygen and light. Any imbalance of those will form the structure for in which algae will grow. Poor distribution of nutrients and carbon dioxide throughout the aquarium will also cause algae to grow. Poor surface agitation can also be a contributing factor. So surface agitation will add oxygen into the water. At night time, when the lights go out, your plants will start taking oxygen out of the water. The fish that you have in your aquarium will also take oxygen out of the water. Any of your beneficial bacteria which will be throughout your aquarium be in your filter system that also uses oxygen and also so does the algae. Algae will strip oxygen out of the water. So the first thing to go once the oxygen levels start depleting in your water will be the beneficial bacteria. Once the beneficial bacteria dies through lack of oxygen you'll start getting ammonia spikes, nitrite spikes, hence then poison and can kill your fish and that will also cause for your algae to start feeding on the ammonia and the nitrites. Poor maintenance and overfeeding will also give algae a good start. A build up of decaying leaves or uneaten food and not maintaining your filter properly will cause ammonia spikes which in turn will cause algae to break out. So what do we do to try and prevent algae in our aquarium? What are the best practices to put into place? So let's start by light. If you're starting a new aquarium then you're probably better off starting with your lights being on for four hours a day and building that grad up gradually over the weeks to get to your eight to ten hours that's recommended. It's also good to have your lights come on with a timer so you can then dictate how many hours per day your lights come on for. Now you also then need to take a look at what time your lights are coming on. To get the benefit of your aquarium you want the lights to be on when you're at home. So there's no point having them on for eight hours when you're out when you're out at school or at work all day and then coming home and having them on for another eight hours because 16 hours of light will be way too much. You'll notice on heavily planted aquariums a lot of the stem plants their leaves will kind of close up and that's an indication that they've had enough light for that day. So your plants will tell you really just just how much light they need as i say when they've had enough they'll close up on this aquarium i have the fluval three plant light running that works off an app that i control off my phone you can control when the light comes on when the light goes off and also the level of light throughout the day as well so the light 
doesn't have to be too strong which would cause algae growth. Good circulation of water around the aquarium is also a great way of keeping algae to a minimum. Getting those nutrients and carbon dioxide distributed around the tank will give you a great chance to prevent algae. A good feeding regime is also great to have in practice. So any food that's left in the aquarium after 10 minutes, you need to be fishing that out. It's also good practice to have one person to be feeding your fish. What you don't want is you to come in, feed your fish when you walk past the tank, an hour later, someone else comes home, feeds the fish. You don't need the overfeeding, so it's always good practice to have just one certain person per day to feed your tank. What you need to remember is any food that's not been eaten within 10 minutes, if that isn't taken out of the aquarium, then that will just feed the algae and obviously you don't want to be feeding the algae. Good surface agitation. So point the outlet flow of your aquarium up so the surface of your water is agitated. It's good practice to have air stones, air pump running. So there's always oxygen being fed into your water, especially the rainbow fish aquarium anyway, which, which love highly oxygenated water. Keep the oxygen levels at a maximum and it'll keep your algae levels to a minimum. A good maintenance practice, set yourself aside a few hours per week where you can clean your filter, where you can go around and take any decaying plant matter out of the aquarium. On a rainbow fish aquarium, 50% water change per week. On a regular aquarium, 20% water change per week. The water change takes nutrients out of the water, which helps then stop algae from growing. And when you've finished with your maintenance, add beneficial bacteria. Beneficial bacteria will keep the ammonia and the nitrite levels to a minimum, which will then help combat any algae growth. So once you have your light levels correct, you've got good circulation, your feeding regime is what it needs to be, surface agitation to add oxygen into the water, air pumps running, your general maintenance per week, and good bacteria levels. Is there anything else that you can do to try and keep your algae to a minimum? Yes. Live plants. Live plants, an abundance of live plants fed well will take nutrients out of the water and algae will just not have a chance to grow. You're always going to get a little bit growing as I said earlier. So what else can we do apart from add live plants? There are certain additions to your aquarium that will eat the algae. So some plecos go for your cleanup crew. Some plecos will eat algae. Otto Sinclus. Otto Sinclus are a fantastic addition to any aquarium. They're not going to compete with your other fish. They're not, they're not predatory in any form. All they're going to do is just eat away at any algae that forms. So I have a great addition to every aquarium. I have Otto Sinclus in all of my tanks. They help keep algae to a minimum. Snails. Nearite snails, ram's horn snails are also another great way of keeping algae to a minimum. Now in a rainbow fish aquarium, I used to have quite a lot of ram's horn snails in here. When I introduced rainbow fish to this aquarium, it does appear that all my snails have now gone. So I can only assume that the rainbow fish have eaten those snails. So maybe not snails in a rainbow fish aquarium a mano shrimp a mano shrimp are a great addition they'll eat away at algae throughout the day they love it there is a mano shrimp in here i don't really see them that often i do think that the rainbow fish would predate on them but there is enough 
plant life in here for the Amano shrimp to have sanctuary. So I know there is some in here because when I start doing the trimming of the plants, I do see a man or shrimp in here. So they're a great addition to any rainbow fish aquarium to keep your algae to a minimum. Adding carbon dioxide can also help keep algae to a minimum. Adding carbon dioxide to your aquarium will mean that your plants will feed off that ferociously, taking all the nutrients out of the water, which helps then keep your algae at bay can be quite an expensive process. I do have carbon dioxide running into a small tank, which I've not really featured on this channel yet. But you can also go down a bit of a, a cheaper route by using something like this, liquid carbon dioxide. Now, liquid carbon dioxide, it's not as effective as the gas carbon dioxide, but what it does do is help prevent algae growth. It puts a little bit more carbon dioxide into the water due to the lack of algae growth and it does help keep it at bay. What you have to be careful for though with liquid CO2 is overdosing can damage your plants. Certain plants don't really like it. Um, if you have black beard algae growing on some of your plant leaves like your slower plants that grow like Anubias you can get black beard algae growing on that. You can treat it directly with a pipette, just squirt a bit on there, but what you will find over the next few weeks is that the leaf that you've treated will die off. So just be careful when you're using liquid CO2 because it can be dangerous towards your plant life. I do hope that you've found today's video interesting and you've got some kind of knowledge of how to prevent algae growth in your aquarium. If so, can you please press the like button and subscribe to the channel for further content. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.